Right folks, it's time we did a project. So we're in the garage and we're going to do a strobe timing light with a rev counter so I can tune my engine on my old motor car over here. So what do we need to do? We need to build this thing. This is our thing for today. On the back it's got some little LEDs. Well they're about one watt apiece so they're fairly powerful. On the front it's got an LCD display so we're going to see how many RPM revs per minute my engine's doing. Got a little indicator light, oh there it is down there, and the sensor bit of it here I've taken off an existing strobe timing light and it's got a ferrite core going around and a, a copper coil inside so if you're making one of these you'll have to make your own or get older one. Uh, not too difficult. And that goes around the spark plug and that senses the spark plugs and it's powered off the battery so it's 12 volts so the whole thing has got uh, two wires three wires out the back it's got the um, sensor cable and it's got the earth and plus 12 volts wire out the back and all we do is power it up clip it around the spark plug lead on the little motor car and it'll tell us how many RPM and we can do dynamic uh, ignition timing using the strobe light off the LED. Oh, and we're going to use an ESP32 and my favourite programming language, Python. Yay! Um, it's going to be, you've got the HT lead from the car and around it we're going to wrap uh, this coil thing here which is a sensor so it's an inductive sensor and it will create a pulse and the pulse we're going to feed into my um, strobe unit Yay. Oops, I can't spell, there you go. Um, and we're going to put a diode on there. I'm going to put um, a Zener diode on here to stop it um, putting too much voltage. I think that's going to be a 5 volt Zener on there. So we're going to stop it putting too much um, voltage onto my input or it'll blow it up. Um, I think we put a capacitor across there as well. And then we feed it into a circuit that's going to be a mono stable. Now I was thinking originally using 74121s because I like TTL logic. But in actual fact, I've managed to hike somebody's NE555 circuit for doing exactly this. And then it's going to feed a CMOS power transistor, which will then feed the LEDs. So I've got four LEDs. They're in two banks of series. Oops, can I do that? Not really. No, there you go. That goes to plus 12 volts because it's a 12 volt unit. I'm beginning to wonder about that, but it is. Oh, and we better put a resistor in here as well. Um, at the moment, I'm running on 10 ohms, which means it's around about 250 milliamps uh, per LED, which is quite a lot, really, quarter of an amp. Ooh, they're a bit overdriven, so it means that I can only use them in pulses. So there we go. Um, now, how about quickly, let's have a quick look at what we've where we've run this from. This is somebody else's circuit that I don't even think works properly because that doesn't connect to anywhere in particular. Should have an earth down here. But it's got a Zener there for protection and it's got this uh, 1N400. I'm using 4007s on mine. Um, and it's got this nice um, CMOS power transistor here that then feeds a single LED. Blah. Um, so I'm kind of using that a little bit. And this is the uh, 
any 555 monostable. Any 555 is a timer, I see, and it can work as an A stable or a, um, so it can do frequencies and things. But today it's just going to be a monostable. And no, that's not even that, is it? I don't know. There's my circuit down here, this one here. And this resistor here and this capacity determine the length of the pulse that comes out of it. There's a little sensor going in. There's a circuit. And hey, there you go. But hey, I don't like their circuit very much, so I've got my own circuit. Here we go. I've borrowed it off this one a little bit here. Notice it's got this protection on the input here. And pulses, that's using a thyristor. Don't really like thyristors very much. So this is my circuit here. It's got protection on the input. It's got a BC547. Just general purpose transistor there to amplify what comes in. 10K pull-up resistor. So I've got a negative pulse coming down here and into the NE555. The R and the C, I think at the moment I'm on 15K and the little capacitor that says 103, which means 10 nanofarads. Um, and then you've got to just wire it up with uh, all the different things in there. And then to the power transistor, which I've used an IRF540N, which is a power CMOS. Um, and put my LEDs, ooh, I've missed out a bank of LEDs here, there we go, over to there, and that goes to 12 volts, not 2 volts, 12 volts. So that's that bit. Um, and we've had to work out a little bit of uh, cracky. How's it all going to work? Let's just get rid of that uh, little thing there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Get rid of that. There we go. That's it. Yeah. Um, so 6,000 RPM, all the pulse, I want a half millisecond or a third millisecond, somewhere around about there. And then I thought, well, there's my circuit again here, little capacitor here. And I am using, yeah, 15K and 10 nanofarads as a timing capacitor. And then I've got the four LEDs on the output with the 10 amp up here. It can be down there, it doesn't really matter. Uh, then I thought I'd just draw out my semiconductors and oh, the capacitors there. Ooh, 547. An IRF540 is a CMOS, be careful not to blow it up. Oh, and I've used a 7805, because what I'm then adding onto this circuit is um, an ESP32, which will run from 5 volts. At least I'm going to power it from 5 volts. So we need, a, we need um, a regulator that will take 12 volts in and put 5 volts out. And this is such a device. There it is there. And I'm taking a pulse off the output this is the output for the LEDs, and I'm taking it off here, giving it a 3 volt um, zener to protect it, so that I've got a 3.3 volt pulse feeding into the GPIO of the ESP32. And, oh my goodness, where are we up to here? I've got to connect an LCD up to it later on, which I will do, but this is the input the, um, version here. Oh, I've got a shot key diagram, 1M5817, which is a high speed diode and that feeds the pulse in that comes down like that there and I've got to be careful at this volt here I don't know what I'm talking about rubbish here this is my protection diode for the power circuit sorry oops um, it's got a bit of smoothing there but this is in case I connect the battery the wrong way around which is not unknown for me but hey there you go right so that's the power circuit done this is a bit here with the protection the three volt zener um, which protects the GPIO input because we don't want more than 3.3 volts to go into a GPIO input on an ESP32 or it will blow it up and they cost about five or six quid I don't know Ooh, we don't want to blow one of those up so there we go and then we've got to connect up the LCD so there's my circuit that I've stolen off somewhere else I think it's called oh circuit schools thank you circuit school nice and I was going to use the I2C, but I'm not using I2C. I'm going to use just a direct 4-bit parallel connection. So I'm using D4, 5, 6, and 7 as 4-bit uh, data going in. And I've got anode, cathode, and the read-write, and the, all the stuff that goes with that. And there is a MicroPython module that will allow me to send uh, stuff.
folks, um, let's build the box that goes around our little rev counter strobe thing. So here is the strobe thing here. Whoa. We've built it all. It's got the strobe thing with the four LEDs. It's got the LCD display. It's got the ESP32 all ready to go. A little indicator light there. We need a box to put it in. So, oh dear. How are we going to do a box? Um, first things first. We need to plan it. So we need to plan what we're doing, draw it all out, get some material to make the box with, some plywood will do me. Make sure you know it all fits properly together. I'll show you these pictures later on. And then we'll build a little box. Here's my little box I've built. It's a, like, it's like a little boat. Yay, there you go. And it's built out of five mil um, plywood. That's, that's no big deal. Glued together with ordinary wood glue. There's my ordinary wood glue. No big deal. And we're going to reinforce the inside so that we can put the top on and fix it together. There we go. Top's on there. Um, LCD display is going to be on the top. And the strobe is going to be here so I can sort of point it at the car. And there we go. Oh, there's the car, by the way. It's an old car and it's got spark plug leads on it. And so I can do the time, the strobe time. A modern car is like the car, yeah, right.